The block size is simply the increment, the value that shows us the range in which IP addresses exist within a subnet. So in this case, because we're working technically in the third octet right here, that means that we're gonna increment by 16. We start at zero for all of our subnets, essentially. And that means the next network won't start until you get to a 16. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. First off, happy new years and welcome to 2025. In this video, I'll be building off of the previous video where I showed you a quick and easy formula to calculate the total number of hosts on any given IPv4 network. In this video, I'll be doing a deeper dive into subnetting IPv4 networks and showing you how you can determine not only the total number of hosts on a network, but also the beginning and end of the network because it's not as simple as you think. Big disclaimer, as I mentioned in the previous video, the, the goal of this isn't to replace using a subnet calculator. That would by far be the quickest and easiest way to calculate the total number of hosts on a network and get an understanding of what the range would be or whatnot. This is a formula that you can use if you're in a situation where you don't have access to the internet or if let's say you're in a testing environment or maybe you just wanna flex your networking knowledge, put yourself to the test and see if you still have that mental edge. So as a quick recap from the previous video, I shared that this right here, the slash 24, is the biggest indicator of how many hosts reside on that IPv4 network. And if you write all of the ciders out from 32 going down to one, and you use this formula uh, starting with one and double that every single step along the way, you'll end up with a formula that allows you to subtract two to get the number of hosts that reside on that network. All right, boom. So as we work with this new problem right here, this new network or whatnot, and we wanna identify the number of hosts, I'll show you exactly how you go about determining that, and then how you understand how that range is split up over these four little, what we call in a networking space, octets. So first things first is we'll go ahead and write out the, the next octet here. So in this case, this 24 is actually gonna be the start of a new octet. So I'll slide this one over. We'll just slice that down the middle right there. And then I'll write out the remaining. So when it comes to filling this in, I'm just gonna follow that same formula that we did last time. So in order to, you know, figure out, you know, how many hosts reside on this slash 20, you know, if I double 256 to find out what 23 is, that's gonna be 512. This will be 1024. The next will be 20. 48, 40, 96. Okay, and you know, the last one here would be 8192, and this would be 16,000 something, and this, the next one would be 32,000 something. And you know, I'm not gonna do the math on those because we're focusing on this slash 20 right here. So following the host method to figure out how many host addresses are available in the subnet, if we subtract two from 4096, that would give us the answer that there's 400 in 94 host addresses on that subnet. But what does that actually look like? How do we know if we use that subnet where the stop and start point would be for that in particular? This is exactly how we know. So typically when you see IP addresses like this, they're broken up into four spaces. One, two, three, and then four. And each of these can go to a max of 255, 255, dot 255 same thing for this first one but they don't go past 255 so you won't have a subnet that's just 172.16.0. you know 4094 it doesn't work like that the next part of this formula to figure out what the start and stop point is of any given subnet is to then write this this value right here, which I'll call block size. So block size. And it's gonna look a little, really similar to this first, this first point right here, where everything's doubling up to 128. So one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and the last one will be 128 as well. But what's different about what we did when we were calculating calculating the total number of hosts is that we're gonna actually use the same exact block size 
over here. And I know you're probably thinking, well, what is a block size? What is that even at the end of the day? And I'm going to show you exactly what it is. The block size is simply the increment, the value that shows us the range in which a subnet uh, the the number of IP addresses exists within a subnet. So in this case, because we're working technically in the third octet right here, that means that we're going to increment by 16. We start at zero for all of our subnets, essentially. And that means the next network won't start until you get to a 16. So the first network that would be available for the slash 20 addresses to accommodate for 4,094 hosts would be 172.16.0.0 slash 20. And that means because the increment here in this case is 16, the next network would be 172.16.16.0 slash 20. Now these are two separate networks, both which that can accommodate 4,094 hosts, with of course the first and last address being the network identifier and the broadcast address. But how do we know exactly what the broadcast address looks like in this case? And I'll show you exactly uh, how to identify that. So our first host, first host on the network is going to be 172.16.0.0. One on that slash 20. So the last host address that could be assigned to, you know, an end device on the network like a computer or whatnot is going to be a 172.16.15.254 slash 20. And I could keep writing these slash 20s behind it, but I think that's just given uh, at, at the moment. So I'll just leave it as it is. And you're like, wait, what, why not? What, why wouldn't it be 255 if it can go all the way up to 255? And that's because that very last address on any network is going to be reserved for the broadcast address so that these devices can ARP and figure out, you know, the IP addresses to the max that reside on a given network. So the broadcast in this case is going to be 172.1615.254. So this first part would be the network identifier, you know, that ends in the dot zero. That's not something that'll get handed out via DHCP to any of the hosts on the network. But the first address that is usable would be this dot one. The last usable one would be 15.254. And then the broadcast address for that would be 172.16.15. Dot two five five. So real quick, we'll do this one more time just to make sure it's, you know, it's sinking in. If in this case, we're still working with the slash 20 and we know our first network is, is essentially the 172.16.16.0.0. And then the next network is uh, the 172.16.16.0. Then what would the next network be? In this case, that would be 172.16.0.0. Dot 32.0 dot slash 20. And this is pretty repeatable. So what I'd like you to do, if you're following along with me in this video, I'd like you to share what you think in the comments, what would be the first host address and the last host address, as well as the broadcast for this subnet right here. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts and the answers that you come up with this. If you found the video helpful, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more helpful insights that you can use to advance in your IT career with confidence. As always, folks, thanks for viewing and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.